From Tom Brady to Drew Brees, we are covering the NFC South today, a star-studded division that should be very exciting come December. Again, be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you have any fantasy football questions or anything football-related that you want to ask me and get it answered on the, sh on the next fantasy video. Put it in the comment section and I will answer it on the next video so get those questions coming uh we don't have any today outside of fantasy spartan who chimed in with a skull chant for his minnesota vikings as we covered the nfc north on the last video um so it was good to hear from fantasy spartan and uh for all of you you are feel free to chime into the comment section if you've been watching these videos and you just haven't chimed in before feel free to chime in and stuff join the rest of us um, and let us know that you're watching, um, and we will uh, be happy to answer any football questions that you have. In the next couple weeks, we're working on trying to get, I'm trying to work on getting a special guest up here on the show. Not sure if it's going to happen or not, um, but we're working on something, a friend of mine. Uh, so we'll see if we can get that on, have a special guest, talk some fantasy football. But until then, we are going to keep on going Division by division, like we have been doing, we are halfway home. We're starting the fifth division today, which in this case is going to be the NFC South. And this is a really interesting division from a fantasy perspective. You have a lot of high draft picks in fantasy football this year. Um, three potential starting quarterbacks, guys that are going in that middle tier that we're all going to have to get into. But we're going to start at the bottom of the division like we always do. But th this is maybe the biggest surprise of the entire video right here. I have the Carolina Panthers, a team that is not projected to do well at all. I have them going 7-9. and nine. Let's get into the Carolina Panthers, okay? I love what they have done this offseason, bringing in Matt Rule as the head coach, who I think is going to be a phenomenal head coach down the line. Every place he's gone. Temple was a mess when he took over. Turned them around. Baylor was a mess. Made them a top 10 team this year. I mean, wherever he has gone, he brings toughness, physicality, and I expect that to continue in... Carolina, and they did an, they had an entire defensive draft. Every pick was a defensive player, and for the most part, I liked their draft, actually. A lot of people were knocking it and stuff because they needed some help on offense, offensive line, maybe another skilled position player. I like what they did. I really do. I love what Carolina did in the draft. Two guys that are very under, that are being very underestimated is Brevion Roy, a guy I was talking up uh, draft time, uh, defensive tackle from Baylor, who Matt Rule is going to be able to work with, I think get a lot out of, is nose tackle, pass rushing nose tackle. And then Chris Orr, linebacker from Wisconsin. This guy, I'm telling you, this guy can be a starter down the line. He went undrafted, but turned on the film at Wisconsin. Um, a lot of people were paying attention to Zach Bond and the sacks he had, but Chris Orr was getting as many sacks as he was. He's a phenomenal pass rusher from the, uh, the linebacker position is just an excellent find that these that the Carolina Panthers had. I assume he's going to make the roster. Um, I don't see how he doesn't make it. He has decent speed, about 4-6-ish. Um, he has some sideline sideline speed, but he's very smart, plays the run well. I'm excited to see what he can do for this defense. Derek Brown could be a tone setter in the future. Um, they're not ready yet, though. Uh, this year is going to be a hard year because Matt Rule is a new coach, shortened off season, doesn't look like there's going to be any preseason at all, so that's not going to help them. They'll probably come out of the gate a little bit slow, but I think towards the end of the year they're going to turn it on, and you're going to see uh, the potential that this team has down the line. I think Teddy Bridgewater will have a solid year. Uh, DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson, they'll be uh, legitimate weapons in this offense. Wouldn't be surprised if they get Curtis Samuel involved as well. Um, a weapon that I think Joe Brady, who as well, I think was a phenomenal hire, offensive coordinator. I was hoping the Steelers would fire Randy Fickner and bring him in. Um, but I really like what the Panthers are building here. I think they're going to be a really good team in the future. Next year, wouldn't surprise me if they're a playoff team at all. But for this year, I'm going to say 7-9. and nine. For fantasy advice, we've talked about a lot about these late-round tight ends that you can get. One that we keep forgetting to mention is Ian Thomas. Greg Olson isn't there anymore. He, Ian Thomas is going to be the top tight end here. We mentioned DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson, but uh, both of them still have a lot to prove as legitimate receivers. Robbie Anderson has a lot of off-field baggage. He's been inconsistent and had a hard time staying healthy. DJ Moore had a nice year last year, um, but they don't have a whole lot else. Um, Ian Thomas can really step up um, and get these middle-of-the-field targets. Neither 
Robbie Anderson or DJ Moore are excellent red zone weapons. So expect Ian Thomas to get some looks in the red zone from Teddy Bridgewater. I'm excited to see what he role he will have in the offense in extended leagues. If everything goes against you at the tight end position and you have to grab some of these late round sleepers, which I don't think is a bad thing to happen this year, take a chance on Ian Thomas as well. We've mentioned we're mentioning, you know, one in pretty much every division, a late round tight end. But Ian Thomas is another one. I'm really excited to see what Ian Thomas can do. I think he's gonna he could be a fifty plus reception guy at the tight end position, be a six, seven, maybe even eight hundred receiving yards guy. Probably not eight hundred, but six, seven hundred receiving yards. And if he can get you six or seven touchdowns, that'd be an excellent year for him. Probably could get him into the top fifteen fantasy tight end talk. So for a backup tight end, Ian Thomas is a guy that has some high upside as a legitimate, legitimate red zone weapon for the Carolina Panthers. To the Atlanta Falcons, I have them going 8-8. Eight and eight. Um, They have like 11 first-round picks on defense. Uh, Chris Lindstrom, offensive lineman uh, Caleb McGarry they brought in last year in the draft. The offensive line should be pretty good. They brought in Todd Gurley. I'm not sure what to expect there. He'll be getting a lot of touches, uh, but I still have concerns about his durability, his arthritis in his knee. Uh, the receivers, of course, Julio and Calvin Ridley are there. Russell Gage just showed some promise in the slot uh, after Mohamed Sanu was traded. Russell Gage stepped right in, did a really good job. I believe Stephen Poor mentioned him uh, in a previous video um, in a question. Uh, he asked about Russell Gage. I wouldn't trust him in fantasy, uh, but he's a guy that really turns on towards the end of last year, and he showed a good rapport with Matt Ryan. A guy that Matt Ryan was talking up, Hayden Hurst, former first-round pick. Originally a baseball player, I believe, was drafted by the Pittsburgh Pirates, um, and he just lost it all of a sudden. He couldn't do it anymore. Um, changed to football, had a really nice career um, at uh, South Carolina, was drafted by the Ravens in the first round. Uh, Mark Andrews was the one who ended up emerging there and didn't really have a role for him. They traded him to uh, Atlanta. Um, and got reasonable compensa- the Ravens got reasonable compensation for him. So I think it was a good trade for both teams. Atlanta losing Austin Hooper, um, and with Thomas Dimitrov being more of an aggressive GM, it's a move that you would expect from him. Uh, for, so, f- again, if you want to go tight end again, Hayden Hurst is more of a middle-round tight end. I would take him over Noah Fant. I would probably take him over Dallas Goddard. A lot of these middle-round tight ends... I, um, I'm not. I'm a little bit shaky on, but Hayden Hurst is a guy that I would probably take ahead of any of those guys. Um, my other fantasy adv- advice, well, not really fantasy advice. Um, you can use it in that sense because I think Calvin Ridley is going to be really good in the non PPR leagues. But here's my bold prediction, really for this division in non PPR fantasy football. Okay, non PPR. This has nothing to do with point per reception. If you, you're in a league where you do not get reward a point per reception which is what I prefer in fantasy. Calvin Ridley is going to outscore Julio Jones in 2020 in fantasy football in non-PPR leagues. That, that, that is a bold take. You guys can tell me what you think in the comment section. Um, but I, I, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of Ridley. I'm just really low on Julio Jones this year because he's not going to get into the red zone. I think Calvin Ridley will score more touchdowns than Julio Jones does. The thing that makes Julio a great fantasy asset is because he gets so many catches. Um, and I love Julio Jones. Don't get me wrong. I think he's one of the best receivers in the league. He's been one of the best receivers for a long time. Uh, but just in this case, that's my bold prediction. I think Kelvin Ridley in non PPR leagues will outscore Julio Jones. Um, and I mean, I don't love Kelvin Ridley either. Again, this is more because I'm not as high on Julio Jones non PPR fantasy. But um, he get the target share went up last year with Matt Ryan. Um, when he, when Calvin Ridley and Matt Ryan were both healthy, when Ridley was, he looked sharp in his route running last year. Um, the speed, he had good speech, showed good hands. Um, he really progressed late in the route, and he really benefits from having Julio Jones on the other side. So Atlanta, 8-8, eight and eight, and Calvin Ridley, watch out for him in non-PPR fantasy, but avoid Julio Jones. Um, that's really my bold prediction for the Atlanta Falcons, who I have going 8-8. Eight and eight. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. A lot of people are high on both these teams. I am have them going to the same record, but I have New Orleans winning the division. Tampa Bay coming in second place because uh, New Orleans, in this case, will win head-to-head in division records. Uh, so I will have Tampa Bay going 11-5. and five. Okay, a lot. Everyone's right, and rightfully so. Everyone's paying attention to this Buccaneers offense. Okay, there, you can go a bunch of different ways, but we've talked about them to death 
on all these other videos. You know, do you draft Tom Brady? Do you draft Mike Evans? I've already said avoid Mike Evans. Chris Godwin could be a beast in PPR. I mean, a beast, maybe a 120 catch guy. Um, which tight end do you trust? And stuff? probably Gronk if he can stay healthy. Uh, but one, one thing nobody is talking about is the Buccaneers' defense. Todd Bowles got this defense going last year, really good towards the end of last year. I like what he did. I like the moves they brought in. Sean Murphy Bunting, second year pro out of Central Michigan. He looked really good last year as a corner. Um, Carlton Davis, rookie back, I think, from 2018. Uh, so he's third year um, now, my bad. Um, I really like what uh, he's become. He's a really good cover corner. Um, they brought in Devin White last year, who could be a tone setter in the middle of that defense. Um, and then the defensive line, you still have some big bodies led by maybe the best run-stuffing nose tackle in all football, Vita Vea. Um, and they still have other pieces. Of course, Shaq Barrett. Um, if I don't, I don't know if he's going to have another 20-sack season. Um, but they have some good pass rushers there as well. So everyone's talking about Tampa Bay as a top-10 offense, and they, they very well could be. But my prediction is that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will have a top-10 defense as well. And that's something that can't be ignored. That, that is what is going to change this team from um, a contender um, of the that division into a Super Bowl contender. You know, Brady's 42, 43, however old he is now and stuff. And I think the leadership will help there. And the offensive line will hopefully be improved with the addition of Tristan Wirfs. And I, I really like what Byron Leftwich and Bruce Arians have um, as a system there on offense. But the defense is what is going to carry this team if Brady starts to struggle. Last year was Brady's worst statistical season in his career. Um, he's not the same quarterback he once was. And I know he, being surrounded by all these weapons, we want to think you know he's going to uh, find a fountain of youth and he's all of a sudden going to come back. That's not necessarily going to happen. The Buccaneers' defense, though, is what can save them no matter what happens with the offense, with all the turnover on offense. This Buccaneers' defense could be really good again this year, and I think they're going to be a top-10 defense, a defense that you can take in fantasy football if you don't want to take one early. And to finish out this division, the 11-5 and five as well, New Orleans Saints. Um, I, I Last year was disappointing. I, I love Drew Brees, okay? He's one of my favorite players. Um, I, I just really like him. He's a class act. Um, you know, j just on and off the field, a great person. Um, I Last year was so disappointing for them when they lost in that first playoff game. And I like the Minnesota Vikings. Um, don't get me wrong. I like Kirk Cousins. I was glad that he, they got a win in the postseason. Um, but I had the Saints going to the Super Bowl. I thought they were going to be playing against the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. I really liked what they had there. And, of course, the year before, you know, losing on that um, uh, disappointing ending uh, for the Saints on that uh, Minneapolis miracle. Uh, okay, the Saints have just struggled once they've gotten into the postseason the past few years. This year, I I want to say that they get over the hump, but they have to pass Tampa Bay. San Francisco is still viable. Um, a lot of people think Dallas is going to be really good. The, the NFC still has a lot of quality teams, so I can't say yet with certainty that New Orleans is going to be a Super Bowl contender. We'll get into that in a video as we get closer to the regular season. Um, I think they'll be a contender, but I don't think they'll be. Um, I'm not necessarily saying they're going to be in the Super Bowl yet. Um, but they have all the pieces. The defense, overall, they have Cameron Jordan, Demario Davis, Marshawn Lattimore. They have pieces on all three parts of the defense. I mean, on offense, of course, Drew, we talked about Drew Brees. Michael Thomas is the best receiver in football right now. Alvin Kamara is a top 10 running back. I'm a guy who th I think is going to bounce back in fantasy this year. Uh, he was injured last year. Uh, they have Jared Cook at the tight end position, rookie Adam Troutman as well. The offensive line is probably top five in the league. Uh, it, they have pieces all over the place, um, but it's being able to put it all together and win in the biggest moments. I know Drew Brees can do it, um, but the defense has to step up. They have sh stunk so bad in some of these big-time situations in big games. Um, and it's key that they cash in this year because I think this is going to be their last shot. I don't know if Drew Brees will come back next year or not, um, but even if he does and stuff, this is their year to do it. They have to cash in this year. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if anyone makes a deal at the trade deadline. Um, they're a team that I expect to be active. They have to put in everything they can this year because I think this is going to be their last shot. And I think it would be good for them to try to put as much around that Drew Brees as they possibly can. 
Um, and my uh, fantasy advice for the Saints is to avoid Emmanuel Sanders. Again, shortened off season. I know Emmanuel Sanders is experienced and Drew Brees is experienced. I think the only thing that this does is benefit Michael Thomas because that gets some of the pressure off of him. Uh, but I don't think Emmanuel Sanders is going to do a whole lot this year in fantasy. Jared Cook will do better probably than him. Um, they still have other pieces on the outside. Traquan Smith. Um, I'm just not comfortable with taking a receiver uh, that's uh, in a, with a new quarterback short off season. I think that's going to benefit Thomas and Kamara. Um, but I would say avoid Emmanuel Sanders in fantasy. That's going to do it for today. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Tune in, tell a friend. And we will see you next time. I'm not sure what division we're going to cover next, but stay tuned. We will cover another one soon. Again, put those fancy questions in the comments section, and they will be answered on the next video. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.